Personal healing is intricately tied to emotional wellness, but have you ever thought about the role that kindness plays in your healing process and daily well-being? Stay tuned for this illuminating conversation. It's time to be kind with Marley Q. Because the time to be kind to ourselves, each other, and the world is now. Hello, Parkers, and thank you for making time to be kind with Marley Q. We are joined here today by a super special Parker from Miami, Florida. Gilsa Fort Martinez is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She's also a speaker and a writer with over 25 years of experience specializing in family therapy and life transitions. She's helped hundreds of individuals, couples, and families rediscover and create a path for a resolution that have turned their life around. She has been featured on numerous TV publications, print publications, and dozens of podcasts, including now, Time to Be Kind with Marley Q. Please help me welcome to the show, Gilsa. Hi there. Hi, Marley. Nice to see you again. Yes, thank you so much for making time to be kind. I know that it's not always easy to, and I appreciate you offering and clearing some space on your super busy calendar to talk to us today. I appreciate that. I I, uh, definitely resonate with what you say and what you do and what your focus is. I mean, at the end of the day, those are the, that's the bottom line, right? Uh, The golden rule being uh, do unto others and, and kindness is that foundation. Thank you. I so I so agree with that. And I, I hear that a lot, right? Do unto others. And I think sometimes we forget like the, the rest of that, right? It's do unto others as you do to yourself. Isn't that the rest of it? As you want others to do unto you. There you go. I know I messed up the words, but I know there's a part there about you, right? And that's why it's so important to start with you and on this journey of self-healing and emotional wellness, really starting with kindness towards yourself allows us to kind of impart some of that kindness onto others, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know your handle on Instagram is Tough Love Healer. Can you tell me why? Why, why? Tell me a little bit about this tough love and healing. I mean, the handle came through even conversations with different clients over the years when I would ask them, so how is it that I have influenced you or helped you or impacted you? And most of the time I got some version of, well, you know, Elsa, you just you just are frank. You don't sugarcoat. And what I wanted was to be able to have the information. And sometimes I didn't like it, but you still made it like palatable for me. So the whole tough love is, you know, a, a compassionate, I can be compassionate like I tell my clients. I can be listening. I can be very caring. And then there's going to be a certain point in time where I'm going to have to be the one that gives you that little push, that little shove that maybe other people are are either doing too aggressively and so we resist it or are afraid to do. So the whole tough love healer is kind of a compassionate approach that I try to encourage people to really take a look at, you know, what are, what are their options um, in life as the transitions are flung at us? Absolutely. I've just currently, I feel like I'm still in this transition. I, I, I consider myself a new mom, even though my, my kid's about to be five in July. I'm still like, I feel like I'm still transitioning into this mompreneur world. I have a two-year-old and almost five-year-old. And in that transition, I've really had to impart quite a bit of love and kindness towards myself through the process. And when I think of tough love, I, I immediately think of like my kids. Mm -hmm. Because I'm raising my kids with like kind of the same tough love that I was raised with, right? My mom is the most selfless, kind, amazing woman. And she's also super tough. Let me tell you, super tough Cuban mama who don't, you know, play no games. And she's got super strict boundaries, right? And I feel I am aware of and I witness myself kind of modeling that tough love way where I'm super kind, but I'm very firm quote unquote, tough on boundaries and rules with with my kids. And I, um, you know, I think that that could sometimes be criticized, right? Like, oh, like tough love on your kids. Right. But I, I really think that tough love, quote unquote, when thought of from a place of kindness and compassion, like you're talking about, could really make a big difference in helping to help someone feel safe. Like you, they know where I stand for and what I don't, <laughs> right? Exactly. To help someone exactly. feel that you care because if I'm this tough on certain things, it's because I care. It's important, right? So what are your, what's your feedback on that? Am I doing a good job as a parent, I guess, as I'm un- indirectly asking you? <laughs> I mean, I, I think you absolutely are because I think that this idea of really creating safety doesn't mean we have to like helicopter or cocoon our kids. Safety has to do with 
in, in my mind, and I think we were raised by very similar mothers, safety to, in my mind has to do with creating like security. I always knew that I could go back to my parents. I was very blessed in that way. And I always knew that my parents had my back. They didn't always agree with me. And I got into plenty of disagreements, particularly with my old school traditional father, but I always knew that they had my back. So like you said, having loving, caring boundaries that are, you know, that are done lovingly and firmly, lovingly and firmly. So we don't need to do them aggressive. I don't encourage you to do them in anger. They just are, this is, you know, what it is. This is what it is. <laughs> this is what it is. My my daughters are 28 and 22 at this point, Marley, and they will tell you that if they didn't want to bring out Psycho Mom, all they needed to do was to tell me the truth, have a conversation with me, and then be willing to take your lumps if if we didn't agree, you know? Because they knew I would do the same. I would, I was, I had no problems with saying, you know what, my bad. And sometimes, you know what, guys, this is the way it is because, because I'm the mom and because your dad is the dad. And, you know, so really I'm loving to hear from you that you are, are really comfortable with stepping into, you know, I can be kind and firm. And there are some things that are going to be because, you know, that's the way dad and I want them to be. Like mama says so. That does fly around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, my daughters are grown. And if you talk to them, they'll tell you it still flies, you know, at my house. <laughs> so there you go. So you're doing a great job, too. Here's a little reminder for the two of us. We've done good. Because when kindness is the foundation, I think of how you parent or how you serve, right, in the work that you do. Like That's going to nourish a, a good environment for that to bloom, for there to be healing, for there to be growth. So I love that. So now that we know the important role that kindness plays in parenting, let's switch over to the role that kindness plays in healing and overall emotional wellness. From your perspective, how important is kindness in the work that you do to help people heal and find their their wellness? I think it's very important, Marley, in, you know, what I do as psychotherapy, the essence, the tried and true of psychotherapy is about creating safety. And it's about instilling hope. And it's about kind of holding space for someone until they are able and willing to step into that space or time themselves. So underneath all of that, there has to be the kindness that allows you to make that connective relationship. You know, the essence of good psychotherapy, and what I mean by good, meaning that it can be effective, that it can be transformational for people, is that you have that therapeutic rapport. And rapport to me, whether it's in the therapy office or in, you know, the coffee shop is about kindness. Can you share what you're thinking tough love wise and still make it, you know, easy on the mind, on the body, on the soul for the person to be able to consider and to take in. So for me, kindness, hope is all about how I help people really kind of rebuild and restore themselves from whatever their crises. And how do you encourage your clients to to be kind to themselves in their healing process? Do you have any like specific technique or question or part about your process that you encourage your clients to be kind to themselves? Curious. I mean, I, I work a lot um, at this point after um, 25 years of being of doing a lot of what, what might be called generalist. You know, I did a lot of work with different populations and, and things. At, at this point, I work most often with women and with women that are really in the throes of definitely some kind of life transition. But I work a lot with women overcoming some kind of betrayal in their life. And, and you know, betrayal is... A broken trust, right? The, the essence of, I thought this was what it is, and now I realize it's not. And so that devastation of loss. And so my primary focus in work with clients, but definitely with women, is the idea of taking care of yourself, of the self, right? The one that has the capital S to it. And, and so I encourage people to do what I call the four R's. Okay. And the first two pieces to me are primary and, and like any other kind of grieving thing, you kind of go to something and then you come back to it. But the first one is I encourage people to just rest. You know, we don't allow ourselves, as you were saying, we aren't kind enough with ourselves. When we're resting, we think, oh my gosh, I'm not being productive. I'm not um, taking something off my list. I'm not multitasking the way, you know, the world says. And so we're very 
unkind, very harsh to ourselves with that whole idea of resting. And and so I talk to people about whatever that looks like for them. Sometimes resting could be right. You're you're vegging in in your pajamas and binging on on a movie or a show. And sometimes resting could be a little bit more mindful. Right. You are intentionally either doing some kind of meditation or a lot of people do exercise and fitness as a way. You know, so there could be an active form of resting and then there is a more quiet and passive form of resting. So to me, that's cornerstone because we are just un- incredibly unkind to ourselves in this in this society with regards to, you know what, today is just resting. I would like to tell all our Parkers listening, I have been guilty of this most of my entire life. I still struggle with it a little bit, but I am grateful to my healing journey and my like epiphany, that divine rest. It's like absolutely sacred. Um, So nothing like having two kids that didn't let you sleep for several, you know, for a lot of years. I don't think I've slept really. <laughs> I will have you value rest. Right. I would really have you value rest. All right. So I got the first R. What's next? So the second R is to reflect, reflection. And this is a part of kindness that I encourage people to do because, you know, again, we are in this hustle culture that we're in. We are in, you know, on and we're expected to be on 24 seven at 150 miles an hour all the time. And so the concept of sitting quietly, just kind of seeing what are what's going, what's floating through our heads, taking a moment to ask ourselves, you know, kind of what I call the hard questions. You know, sometimes my clients will say to me, well, that's not very kind when you want me to ask some of these questions. At the same time, there's a kindness that goes in with kin. Can I look at myself? Am I willing to look at myself in all of my glorious flaws, you know, and will I take the time to, you know, to really kind of be my own, you know, comfy, cozy blanket, so to speak, you know, in ways. So the reflection process to me, I encourage people to do it old school. You know, I'm very much paper and pencil. I want you to just ask yourself the basic questions. Who am I? Uh, what's important to me? What What's different for me now than when I was, you know, 20? Uh, just any question is important. Any question is relevant to getting to know yourself in a, in a different way. So this is different angle of kindness. It's one that sometimes I, I have to sell a little more to people in the sense of it is a kindness to yourself. The more that you understand yourself, the more that you have awareness, then the more mindfully or intentionally you can step into what are the choices that you want to make. doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes. It just means that you might be more clearly able to tell where are the potholes in the road, so to speak. Absolutely. I, I believe, I think that's such an important part of the work that you do and you, quote, force your clients to do it, whether they think it's, you know, tough love or not. Reflection, I always say without reflection, you see no growth. Without reflection, you see no growth. You're just constantly in the doing and the doing and the doing and you're carrying with you maybe old identities, baggage, things that you haven't, that aren't even you anymore. Absolutely. So without that kindness like clarity is kindness and sometimes clarity doesn't look good right. <laughs> sometimes what you first it right. doesn't look good but there's kindness in being really clear about who you are why you believe you're on this earth where you've been where you think you're going where that gap is like how we're treating ourselves in our journey i think reflection is paramount so so far i'm with you on board for these two r's tell me more well another piece of that reflection as you were saying there is is really entering into the part of forgiveness you know and it, to me forgiveness is also a cornerstone in being kind to ourselves because you mentioned you know i'm i might be looking at myself in ways that i'm not not even that person anymore and so that's all about right judgment and self-judgment that we do and we're we i'm talking about you know again western society u.s societies is the we that i tend to talk about but definitely us as hispanic women you know kind of trying to bridge the old school traditional way of thinking and now trying to transition into, you know, more of the American values and so forth. I mean, like you, I grew up with very traditional Hispanic parents and it was very tough at times to stay true to what they considered to be important values, cultural and historical, and to also, you know, be present and be able to live a, a life here. So the the willingness to look at ourselves and, and know that we've shifted and we've changed, and some of it we've done willingly, some of it, right? Life shoves us into those those changes, then the ability to really forgive ourselves 
for how we do that process. As you were saying, the the idea of being a mom and a mompreneur, that is, I started practicing when my oldest daughter was two. And that was really hard. I wanted to grow this business. And, you know, my mom and my mother-in-law, they both worked, but they didn't have careers. They worked and they didn't have businesses. They worked for somebody. So it was a lot of clashing there and a lot of self-forgiveness that I had to do for not being with my daughter 24-7. And yet I'm a much better mother because I worked because I had my sense of self. So forgiveness to me is a big piece of that reflection part. I totally agree with that. So thank you for bringing that into 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 the conversation for sure. So we got two R's under our belt so far. You said there were four, right? Yes, the, the third one is reset. And how that works with kindness for me is when we do this resting and we're allowing and we let resting become a little bit more intentional and habitual, right? More consistent. And we continue to ask ourselves some of the questions so that now we start to make maybe decisions a little bit more consciously. Maybe we decide that we have to make some shifts and we let go of things that maybe are hard to let go of. All of this is the process of resetting. And when you're ready and usually we know when we're ready. We just don't always allow ourselves, but we usually know when we're ready to take that first step into, let's try this different idea, or let's uh, meet this different person, or connect in with this particular business idea. Whatever it is, the resetting has to, or the resetting comes in when you're feeling that you have more of that uh, foundation. All in this is about kindness for yourself. OK, uh, like we said, if we're if we're going to judge ourselves, criticize ourselves, move ourselves into the space where where we become immobilized, either with anxiety or fear, you know, you aren't you, you aren't able then to do the reset. And so the reset to me is like when we, you know, the computer, we kind of restart the computer and and we we have our basics, right? All the basic stuff in the computer is there, but there's some, you know, new and improved pieces or maybe there's a little program here and there that we hadn't noticed and that now we put more energy or emphasis on. And so the resetting takes you or allows you to go into what I call the fourth step, which is the re-engaging. This is when you more intentionally decide to re-engage with the world, whatever world that is. In the case with a lot of my women clients, it might be about actually stepping into their re-engaging in their marriages or stepping into the idea of divorcing, but it could be any layer, changing jobs, allowing our children to go into kindergarten and and we leave them at the front door. We don't take them, you know, whatever that is, right, that it allows us then to, you know, re-engage with our various worlds and the various hats. But we do it now from a place of, you know, a little bit broader understanding of ourselves. Oh, my goodness. That's so I feel like you just you just outlined in four R's, which I love wordplay, <laughs> alliteration and acronyms, as you know. I know we, we don't know each other that long, but you know me for five minutes. You know, I like acronyms. <laughs> And you're a Parker, by the way. I don't know if you've learned this one. And folks listening, do you know what a Parker stands for, Gilsa? I did. Oh, dear. Random kindness. I Acts know. of random kindness. Um, I forgot the P. Performs <laughs> of random kindness. Yes. So when you're a Parker, you're a person that performs acts of random kindness, right? So you do this absolutely every single day. Now you know the acronym for it. All of you listening, you're all Parkers too. So just in case you're new to my world and didn't know that acronym, Parker. And what I was saying with this is I was really like, my journey with, I had to really learn my last burnout experience, mm-hmm. October of 2016. And I made a decision. I think if I do not change, if I do not like change this, I'm going to die. Like it got right. that serious from like, I will not continue, not just my work and my passion and, and my philanthropic work, but I just, I don't think I will continue existing if I don't change how I am treating myself. And it really was mm-hmm. this total outward do unto others without <laughs> doing any of the kindness unto self, you know? So that was 2016, several years ago already. And it's taken some time. It's taken some time to, for my body and my brain nervous system to rewire itself Mm -hmm. to appreciating and valuing and prioritizing rest, which Mm -hmm. was absolutely the complete opposite of my life prior to, to to this awakening and necessity for it. Reflection, I really had not done any real reflection work to pause and really look at how far I've come from my immigrant parents coming to the United States, from me actually starting a business in 2010, not knowing anything like 
about it, not having a role model, not having, you know, the right environment, so to speak, to nurture this in me, etc. And here we don't fast forward and actually reflect and ask ourselves these questions. We're not able to be proud of ourselves and be like, hey, you know, when you've been through some dark times, you've been through some difficult things and the forgiveness that has to, you know, happen is is such a part of it. And then resetting, like once you're ready and hey, it might take you, I don't know, a couple sessions with Gilsa. It took me a couple of years, people. I did not seek Gilsa's help. <laughs> I did not. You know, I, I kind of went through this on my own and with my family to a small extent, etc. And it took some while to kind of reset and be like, all right, I am no longer this stressed out, burnt out, worried, anxious event planner that I've been all my life. Mm-hmm. I feel I'm being called into becoming a parent. That's when Mm -hmm. we started even trying going down that journey. I feel I'm being called to speak and connect with people in a a different way. I'm being called to create courses, but Mm -hmm. it was a lot of resetting that needed to happen mentally and identity wise to step into, right? I am a kindness influencer. Mm -hmm. I am a leadership trainer. I'm a community builder. Like that's who I am. What Mm -hmm. I do? Oh, you can pay me to speak at your event. You can pay me to, you know, do workshops and retreats, right? But that all really had to come from kindness and come back to core me, right? Yeah. To the core yeah. and then be able to re-engage. Enter Time to Be Kind with Marley Q podcast and my effort to re-engage with my community that I felt, you know, I, I kind of, I forgot, and I didn't forget about, but I tossed it off to the side because it caused me so much stress, worry, anxiety, burnout, and now really being able to come back and say, listen, there's a way that we can be the spark and we can be of service to others and be that change that we wish to see in our own lives and for the world, but it really has to start It has to start with you because if not, it's just not sustainable, right? Right. Sustainable. That's the great word because we could do it. You did it there for a number of years. So did I. So did our parents. And as children of immigrants, as you said, this is what we're taught to do. We just go, go, go. The question really is, is it sustainable? And is it sustainable in a way that you have some you know, satisfaction, some quality of life. The two main reasons that people go into therapy in this country anyway is that they complain of anxiety or depression, okay? And those things are about, like you said, the core, the soul that isn't really being nurtured or honored. Correct. And I just want to use this microphone and this time and this platform for anyone listening that might be kind of in a season of life where you feel like like that angst of like, all right, you know, I need to transition or I need to make a change. I need to like pivot into something. And you feel that resting and reflecting and kind of going through this process might be helpful for you. How can our Parkers listening connect with you? I know you were so generous to offer a 15 minute consult for people that reached out to you and review the show. So if you're out there listening and you review our podcast, rather leave a review on iTunes or follow us on Spotify or leave a comment on our blog. If you engage with us and this episode, Gilsa is so generous and she's going to offer you a 15 minute consult. Yes, I'd love to be able to do that. You could also find me, as you mentioned, on Instagram. I'm at Tough Love Healer. You can find me on Facebook, as well as my website, HelsaFort.com. can give you a little bit more information through my blog and things like that, get a better, little bit better feel as to, you know, who I am and how I work. But definitely, you know, the 15 minutes is usually enough for people to get a feel for is allowing yourself to go and have conversations with somebody that you don't know, you know, take out the uh, dirty laundry, as we would say in, in Cuban Spanish, right, with somebody else and really allow yourself to start that kindness process with yourself. I encourage it. Doesn't have to be with me, but I encourage it. I encourage it. I encourage it too. Thank you so much for your generosity, for your kindness, for spending this time with me and our Parkers listening. I hope that we get to see each other real soon. Yes. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me. So if you enjoyed this episode of Time to Be Kind with Marley Q, and I know you did, tell us about it. You can leave a comment over on my website, marleyq.com forward slash this episode number. You can also leave a rating and a review over on podcast. Follow us on Spotify. You know what to do. And you could also choose to be the spark of a conversation over on our private Facebook group. If you're not part of my kind crew yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. I invite you every week. Go over to marleyq.com forward slash this episode number and click the link to request access to our private Facebook group. That's where we connect each and every week. And I want you in there. You'll also find the full transcription and show notes, plus the links to connect with Hilsa over at marleyq.com forward slash this episode number. Thanks again for making this time to be kind with me. See you next time.